uh, the first order of business is public comment, and you can comment on pretty much anything you'd like. I know many people are here to comment on the uh, Route 17 Recreational Complex, and what I did ahead of time was I asked Carla, uh, mem uh, the co-chairman of our committee, to um, put a sheet out so that we could have at least a listing of your names. But if you're not on the list, don't worry about it. There'll be opportunity for you to speak as well. Um, in the um, effort of being efficient, I'm trying to uh, ask you to keep your comments as uh, brief as possible. And um, if you uh, need more time, that's fine too, but we'll be able to get more discussion if we're able to get through this list in good order. So the first person under public comment is Patrick Farley, and Patrick is a 176 Middle Haddam Road resident. Patrick? You go up to the microphone because we are on uh, videotape. All right. Uh, my name is Pat Farley, and uh, I have two children here uh, in the town of Portland. I've been here since uh, 2004, uh, an eight-year-old and a ten-year-old. They both uh, participate in sports in town. And uh, one quick thing I'll just share with you: I've been playing baseball, and um, we go to other, to other towns and we see the, the baseball fields they have, and, and the remark we get is, "Hey, why, why don't we have that field here in town?" And um, It'd be great, I think, for the, the town and for all the families in town to have that park somewhere to go to with the children, uh, to play baseball, soccer, also uh, somewhere to walk around. I know it's going to be some hiking trails, and I think it'd be a, a great thing for the whole community. So, thank you, Mr. Thank Brown. you. Thank you. Karen Lebedia, 73 Penfield Hill Road. Um, I've been a resident, lifelong resident, 63 years in the town of Portland. I grew up in the 50s and the 60s. School, playgrounds, tennis court, Main Street. That's where we played. Nothing's changed for the young people in Portland in that amount of time. No swimming area to cool off unless you were lucky enough to live in Joe's Pond, Kelsey Pond, Great Hill, or if you're brave enough to jump into the quarry hole. The only thing that's changed is now we can pay to go to the quarry hole. I raised two sons in the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. They played ball. They played soccer, they played baseball. My husband and I would play the coin toss. Who's going to go to which field to see which child play? Because you weren't all in one location. And nothing has changed. Still the same. We're in the 2000s, and seniors are a lot more active than when I was growing up. We like to walk. We like to play on rec teams. We like to play bocce. We like to play horseshoes. We have grandchildren that we like to take to playscapes and splash pools. And we don't want to have to leave our town to do that. This recreation has been planned, this park, for years. I've gone to several of the meetings. I've followed the progress. A lot of thought and energy has gone into it. Recent political times are saying we need to bring millennials into the town of Portland. You have to have something to bring them in here. And this park would be a very beautiful plus to present to a young family or a young couple coming to town and offering a place for recreation. So please, I ask that it be put to referendum vote and let the citizens vote whether they're for or if you're against, but at least to give us a voice on this. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, uh, Jim Koji for Overlook Court. Jim? Hi, Jim Koji for Overlook Court. I'll be quick because I know I've spoken to you guys in the past. I just want to reiterate, and for people that haven't been in these other meetings, the growth of the Portland soccer has been amazing. So when I started, we had roughly 230 to 250 kids in a session. We are going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about <clears throat> 320 kids this coming fall session. We are growing tremendously. There's not enough fields. Our number one field is leased at the YMCA. It's hard to maintain. We don't want to put the investment of dollars into it because we don't own it. Um, we think also if we have the ability to have a field of this complex in size, we can do tournaments, we can bring people in, we can have increased volume to our restaurants, gas stations, stores, etc. And overall, um, I work for a healthcare company. The number one reason why medical costs are going up is obesity, people not exercising. 
I think we have a, a opportunity here to help everybody in the community, whether you're one or whether you're 99, to get out, be active, and do something that you don't have the opportunity to do today. So my request and my ask is please let's um, pass this, get it on the November ballot, and let's see where the rest of the community lies. Thank you. Thank you. Joseph Files, one cross street. Yes, my name is Joseph Files. I'm 78 years old. I've grown up in Portland, lived here all my life. I'm not sure if this is the right time to bring this up, if not possibly under school safety zones. I just returned from Florida, which is no claim to fame, but I could come out of Middlesex Avenue the other night. It was last Wednesday night. I'm stopped at the stop sign, or at the light. I see another car southbound on Main Street, moves over to the right because we have some whoopsie doodles painted in the road now. I don't know what that's all about. But anyway, car moves to the right, stopped, had a signal light on to go up Fairview Street, waiting for a car to come up Main Street. Just about that time, another southbound vehicle comes down Main Street, shoots around him on the right. There is no more lane there. It's not wide enough for a lane. His wheels went up over the curb, and I had a terrible flash. Chills went up my spine. I'm serious. I pictured the school guard there and a whole bunch of fifth graders standing there getting run over because somebody didn't like the four lanes that had been there for years. I say today, please look into this and please do something about it. We, don't, we can't tell a dead kid he shouldn't have been that close to the road. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you. Hello, I too will keep it short. Um, but I am a coach here in town of soccer and, and basketball. Um, I've got a young family. And uh, we're all very excited about the opportunity to have a park in this town. To the point earlier about millennials moving here, I've got three different uh, friends with young families who chose Glastonbury and Manchester, primarily because they didn't want to have to travel outside of their hometown for shopping, as well as public parks. So I also ask you to add this um, let us vote on it, and I think that uh, the time for change is certainly now. Thank you. The next person is April Graves, 7 Rear Freestone Avenue. Hi, I'm the mother of three small children here in town that play sports and I'm also on the Little League Board of Directors. And I just ask that this be brought to at least a vote for the town. I think it's wonderful to have a recreation park where I could watch both of my children play at the same time, as opposed to having to have my husband go to one field, I go to another, and we miss out on the other child playing, as well as being able to have a concession stand, which we could then make a little bit of profit from and be able to bring down the rising registration fees that it keeps costing more and more for kids to play in this town. And as the mother of a small child also, I'd like to not have to pack up and leave to go to a splash pad or to find swings during the school year because there aren't swings available in town. So I just think it's a good idea to bring it to a vote. Thank you. Thank you. The next name, um, I, forgive me, I'm having a little difficulty reading it, but I think it says Lori, um, 20, Michael Drive? I love it. Yes. I apologize, I couldn't read your writing. <laughs> Candace Matters, 25 Breezy Corner Road. I would just like to start off by saying I would like to see the town give the residents of Portland the opportunity to vote on the funding for the new town park facility. I am also in support of it. I've been a teacher in this system in Portland for 37 years. My children are grown, they're in their 30s. We don't need it. But 
I want to see all the other students in this town and residents have the opportunity to have wonderful fields. It's true. You've scrambled from place to place. There aren't enough. I'll go on Saturday morning to see my grandchildren, and there's got to be 200 kids on this field for soccer, and it's just not enough room. I am a senior citizen. I'll be retiring soon, but I'm willing to pay whatever is necessary to keep the kids on the right road. And trust me, you need to start early for this and get them involved and keep them involved. Thank you. The next person is Dave Fenton, uh, 29 Rustic Terrace. Dave? Hello, board, Dave Fenton. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the Portland Soccer Club. I'm the vice president along with one of the senior referees. I also have a wife who's on the baseball board. Um, we've obviously been very involved in this process. The committee uh, headed up by Park and Rex um, in organizing this has done an outstanding job, I think. I'd like to credit Sean just for his hard work and his committee's hard work on this. Um, it's been well thought. It has our full support. I'm not going to go over all the reasons that everybody's beautifully uh, explained already. Um, the one thing I would just add for anybody who doesn't know, as I'm a state referee, so I travel around the state doing a lot of competitive games. One of the places I actually do go is Oakwood Park in Portland. Um, just so everybody's clear, that is not Portland soccer. <laughs> I'd love it to be, it's beautiful, It's but just for clarity's sake, we do not have any ownership of that at all. Um, so we're moving in the right direction to getting another beautiful park if we can go along with this plan. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Lee McLelland, 116 Paley Farm Road. Hi, I'm a mom in town. I have two kids. One is 10 and one is 12. They both are involved in baseball and soccer. And I feel we should definitely put it up for vote for the citizens to vote for this park. I think it would be a great opportunity for our kids to play, to participate in some tournaments, and not only just for kids, but I think adults would enjoy it of any age, from, like someone said, from 1 to 99. There's going to be a hiking trail. That'd be fabulous for everybody. So I think it'd be great for the entire town. So I think you should bring it to a vote in the fall. Thank, Thank you. you. The next speaker is Joel McClelland, 116 Paley Farm Road. in staunch opposition to what my wife just said. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, I do support the plan. I've read, um, I, I've looked at the, the plans in detail, and I think it's awesome. Um, I know East Hampton is, East um, Hampton is a good example of a town that's running a sports complex really well. Um, somebody already mentioned the benefit of concessions, and I say put it to a vote. Oh, yes. The next speaker, Mike Hernandez, 71 Stewart Hill. Good evening, board. Mike Hernandez, 71 Stewart Hill, uh, lifelong resident here of Portland for 40 years. Um, I also have a daughter in town now, and uh, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, most of my neighbors on Stewart Hill. They've asked me to come up here and speak. Also, I'm speaking as uh, vice president of the Portland Little League, and I'm going to let my uh, fellow board members go in depth of more why uh, Portland Little League needs it. But mostly, I'm going to stand up here as a commander of the uh, VFW here in Portland where I spoke with my fellow members and I'm gonna kind of jump on what Karen Labadia was saying about stuff for the seniors to do. Most of our veterans uh, in our club are Vietnam War veterans and uh, in our last meeting uh, we brought this up and uh, we were talking about the park, we were talking about the Elmcrest thing, but mostly we were talking about the park and how the veterans, the Vietnam veterans here in Portland would like a park, a safe place to walk trails, play bocce, play tennis, uh, do the little walking exercises, which I believe this park provides all that. And they were excited, and they asked me to come up here and speak for them. 
and uh, tell them that they would at least like given a chance to vote this November on the park. So thank you guys. Also, the Public Works Director, and I was just a bit confused why this item was on this agenda. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, a few meetings ago we had Long Range Capital before you, and I believe the direction to the Long Range Capital Commission was to meet further with the uh, various departments in town to determine what costs were were needed for for important other items, other infrastructure items. Uh, we have been meeting with the Long Range Capital Commission. Uh, I met with them Monday. I believe the superintendent of schools met with them. I believe Parks and Rec met with them last week. And we have pre presented to them um, important items, other important items for, of infrastructure that are in need. And those numbers are significant numbers. So I was hoping that the board would look at those numbers and take that into account uh, as far as costs that will be coming forward very soon. Um, when they consider uh, a referendum item. Uh, I believed that uh, you had directed me that you didn't need my information until September, so I thought that Long Range Capital would be in here shortly to give you other information that you'd take into account when you move forward to put forth a five and a half or six million dollar referendum item that commits us to those monies. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Speaker on the list, Noreen Brown, 3 Courtney Lane. Good evening. I just want to share that I'm a strong proponent of this recreational field. Um, I've been here for eight years, and I have an eight and a six-year-old who are um, two boys who are very active. Um, you heard that I live on Courtney Lane, so I'm kind of out in the hills of Portland. We have no sidewalks which is beautiful out there, but there's no place for my kids to go out and be active besides our yard right now. So, um, which is, our yard is beautiful, but um, it would be great if we had a place for my kids to go and ride their bike, um, congregate with their friends. Um, that was a big um, downfall when I moved here. My kids were not in the public schools yet, and it was very difficult for me to meet other moms um, and other families in the area. So we were constantly going to East Hampton, Colchester, um, you know, Cromwell to use their facilities. Um, and not until my kids got into the public schools here did I have the chance to meet other families um, in town. So I feel like not only for my family, but for the community, it would be a huge benefit. Um, lastly, I would like to bring up that I'm also a strong proponent of having a, um, a water source such as the splash pad um, because I feel, you know, here in Portland, we don't have any public access to uh, water source. So if you don't have a pool, um, or you know, you don't have the key to the um, to the private park um, on Job's Pond or Great Hill Pond, then it's very difficult for the kids to cool off in the summertime. Um, so I just want to share. I'm a strong proponent, and I, you know, I hope this goes to you. Have you give us the opportunity for us to vote? Thank you. Thank you. Person Zane Barber, 1288 Portland Cobalt Road. Good evening. I've uh, only lived in town about four years, but I grew up in East Haddam, uh, as did a, I got a very large family there. And most of what I remember about Portland was coming and uh, laying a good stomping on you in soccer season. We were a lot better back then. I went to Hale Ray, but now we're terrible, so it's not really something to brag about. But uh, I do remember from grade school on up uh, kind of mocking the facilities that were here. Uh, wasn't really pleasure to play on them. Divity fields, like nothing that I, that I would care to boast about. So it would be nice to have a good professional-looking complex. I have three small children, uh, all of them, well, Smallest one doesn't play anything, but the seven and four year old are pretty adamant about their sports. I'm pretty adamant about activity. I went to college to be a, a phys ed teacher, and I don't do it, but I do like sports. Uh, I lived in a bunch of different countries, a bunch of different towns. Um, 
and if there's land that's <clears throat> unfortunately I can say this uh, partially because of family tensions that I have but if there's land especially a big plot of land that is there to be developed you're gonna get something your community wants and that's beneficial or you're gonna get a strip mall and I am not the type of person who even go I don't even go to Dunkin Donuts so that's not what I'm looking for a recreation plex I think would be great I'd like to see it on the referendum thank you um, we are going to um, ask if there are other people that would like to speak so we'll start um, why don't I start in this front row so anybody in the front row that wants to speak second row third row nope on this side first okay uh, fourth row in the back okay we'll start with Anta. <coughs> and just give your name if you would for a recording secretary please. no problem Anta. my name is uh, Anton Trojanowski I live on 77 Old Marlboro you're gonna spell your last name sir oh yeah <laughs> it's a uh, T-R-O J-A-N O-W SKI. I do have three little kids, but on top of that, I've uh, worked in the field of public health for over a decade. Um, so everyone that's talking about uh, benefits for seniors, it, they're right on. Um, the levels of obesity are, are just going through the roof, and this is a great way for seniors to get more active, as well as a place for kids to play. And on that note, we're going to go home and put the kids to bed. So please get this to vote. going to be a f hard act to follow. Uh, I, I, I don't know how I do it. I don't know. That's a hard act to follow. I, I mean, yeah. there's just too many factors there that I can't <laughs> even compete with. So, sorry. I'm Joe Ingalls, um, 207 East Cotton Hill Road. Um, I've been before the Board of Selectmen many times. I'm part of the commission with Sean and Ralph. Uh, I'm also a board member for the Little League in town, and the Little League is 100% behind the park, as you well know. Um, it's a place for I mean, we've talked a lot as a group about the community aspect of it, having all this activity in one location, which I think is core to all these families, so I won't repeat all of that. For Little League in particular, it means being able to host tournaments, which is something we're not really able to do today very well, or at all for that matter. And, um, you know, we have 240 some odd kids in our program that's growing as well. So um, I have two children who will not benefit from this, but I am a supporter of it, and I know the Portland Little League is a supporter of it. My kids are 14 and 17, so. It's a little bit too late for me, but uh, I got bigger things to worry about. So I just ask that we let the let the town let, the, let you know put it on the on the on the referendum and let the people vote on it. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Anybody else on this side in the back? Anybody else that wanted to speak on this side? We'll start with this front row on this side. Are you waving or? <laughs> Second row. Third row, yes, Mr. Givens. Uh, hello, my name is Connor Givens. I live at 41 Paley Farms Road, and I've lived basically my entire life in Portland. Uh, I've graduated from the high school, gone through the public school system every year, except for my freshman year of high school, and uh, I, I think this town park is a great idea and it would be great for the town um, I know growing up uh, my parents had to go back and forth between fields to see me and my sister play and uh, I my mom was just telling me how much she would have loved to be able to watch both of us at the same time and not have to choose and now as a referee for the Portland Soccer Club I know that I have to travel in, to different fields between games and I have at times actually been late for games because I have not been able to get to the other fields and I just think this would be great for the town, so I ask that it would be put on the referendum. Thank you very much. We'll go up to the fourth row. Anybody there? The back row, fifth row? And then any of the folks standing? Some of you have spoken already, but it's okay. 
And then we'll go to this side of the room. Or anybody that, yes, this lady right here. Hi, I'm Jillian Coppolino, 48 Rose Hill. Okay, and could you please spell your name? C-O-P-P-O-L-I-N-O. -P -P -O and your address again? 48 Rose Hill. Thank you. Yep. I got to be honest with you, I wasn't planning on coming tonight. I happen to be out doing some hula hoop cool thing that I think the hula hoop lady does. And, <laughs> and I was like, cool, and I know Mike knows her. He goes there. Um, but... I also saw some postings of my friends who are here tonight trying to, you know, get people to really voice up. And I, I also mentioned it as I came here, it's like, are we really thinking about not letting this go to vote? And I'm just thinking in my head, why wouldn't we? Whether you want it or not, I feel like it really should be the voice of Portland who's making that, you know, having those people come and really make that decision. I know in some of our voting, we don't have good turnout, you know, but I think for support, we should really be able to give everybody that opportunity. Um, I'm definitely for it. I initially wasn't sure, but so many people made really great points, like Noreen saying, like, yeah, my son can't really take a bike ride. I'm on Rose Hill. We're, luckily, we have a cul-de-sac, but there aren't many streets at all that you could do that. Someone else also made the point of, um, I, think par I think, Carla, you made the point, par park and rec, like having summer quest. Um, you got to go be in the high school right now. Like, how great would that be to get out, you know? I have a few people that I know over the past few years that have looking to buy a house in Portland. So I've watched a real estate in Portland and I don't know, I'm not a real estate <laughs> you know, expert, but it doesn't look like it's doing so hot. You know, the values seem to, you know, coming coming down and I just think we could be a really great town and if this is an opportunity that would attract people in, um, somebody made the point of about the mil the millennials, you know, coming in. I feel like in Port I love Portland. I've been here for you know, almost 9 years now. And I feel like it's a hidden gem, and until you're here, you can't appreciate it. So you really need things that are gonna stand out to people and get them to look at us and be here. And this would definitely be one of them. And you know, we have how many marinas and how many golf courses, and we have a beautiful river from park, but I feel like we only just take it that far. You know, I, I don't know many people actually in Portland who have a boat, <laughs> you know, and I don't, you know, it's, it's like we only take it that far. This, I feel like, is something that could really shine and, um, you know, put in people's faces that we're a great town, come here. I see lots of shops closing, you know, businesses closing. We can't seem to get major businesses in here, even though we're, you know, we bring a lot of towns through here. But I think the more people we have come here, the people that know, it'll help the economy. You, you get more people here. You're going to do that by having great things to bring people's attention to Portland. So on top of just why wouldn't we send it to vote, on t I really think it's something that should also uh, be voted to pass. So thanks. Hi, Donna Rini, R-I-N-I, 38 Deerfield Lane. I've been here for 25 years and um, I have a D1 athlete. I have to say that most of her um, sports upbringing uh, not only came through um, our own travel team here but for many activities outside of our town. So when I hear the young parents talking about we need a venue to raise our children, that is very true. There was very few people like myself who was a stay-at-home who could drive to Hebron, Colchester, Glastonbury, um, East Hampton. It was anywhere but Portland. Portland, though, is a great small town, um, close-knit community, and to have a venue for new parents, new kids to grow up in, not just at our schools, um, I think it's very important. I think the vote should go to the people, not just the board. Um, thank you. Thank you, John. How about in the hall? Is anyone in the hall want to speak? Can you all hear me OK? Anyone else in the room that changed their mind? Okay. Thank you. Um, I do want to point out that um, 
in talking with the registrars of voters and the town clerk, the location for the presidential election, which is in November, which when the selectmen decide what the question or questions will be on the ballot, will not be at the senior center anymore. We are going to be voting at the high school. And the reason is uh, there's more space there and also the, there is more parking there and um, it's a lot more comfortable, particularly if it's bad weather and you have to go inside. You know, in November it can be bad, bad weather. So we'll be coming out with more publicity on that from the town clerk and the registrar's office but I wanted to announce it since there's so many people here tonight, so pass the word on that. And yeah, the, sc the schools are now closed on that day. Yes, that's right. That's right. Thank you, Ben. So they'll, they'll be very accessible. Yes. If there's room, yep, if there's room, sure, yep. There's handicapped places and 10-minute parking, and you would be able to park there. And because there's no school that day, as Ben pointed out, there'd be parking in that lot that's closest. It'll be in the band area, the, you know, in the more the middle school area where there's a separate room so you're not going into the school itself. <coughs> the, the principals have been very uh, cooperative and helpful to us, so we'll have more on that as time goes on. But since there's so many of you here, I wanted to be sure you knew about that. Okay, so we'll go on to the next item on the agenda which is um, the referendum question for the November 2016 ballot. And um, we had been asked to put this on um, by uh, actually Ralph Zampano, the chairman of, of the Parks and Recreation Commission, had asked us to talk about this tonight. He did draft a sample question. Um, anything that we would put on a ballot has to be approved by this board as of a deadline of September 8th. So um, conceptually, the selectmen will be talking about the question, but anything in terms of wording or whether there'd be other items put into the question, we would have to go to our bond counsel, which is the attorney that assists us when we write things to make sure that they're legally done correctly. So I just wanted to clarify that while there is a draft question, um, and the selectmen are gonna talk about the topic tonight. <laughs> Um, the actual wording would always have to be vetted properly by our legal counsel. So with that, I'll open it up to the selectmen for a discussion. I'd like to start. Sure, Mike. Uh, you call a chance to, to uh, you, you, a you do, yeah. Um, the commissioners, the people that are on the committee for the Route 17 project can speak, and you can speak back and forth because if there's a quorum of you here, and I think there is, Carla, um, it's been noticed properly so that you can dialogue with us. Uh, but I've called on Mike, so if you could hold, and then we'll call on you. Is that okay? Carla, okay, all right, I'm, Mike. Gonna, I'm gonna pass back to Carla and let her okay. finish first. <laughs> go ahead, Carla. <laughs> because I always let the women go first. And if you could just identify yourself for the record, for the record. Hello everyone, thanks for coming out. My name is Carla McKay. Um, I live on 17 Cross Street and I have been part of the um, Route 17 Commission um, starting in about January or February. Um, so I wanted to thank you first for um, setting this special meeting for us. Um, this journey uh, to this moment has certainly been long and all of those involved are truly passionate so we thank you for all coming out and speaking um, in 2006 portland began the process of the park by purchasing 37 acres of land um, there was a call to the public about what they felt would be the best use for these 37 acres and as a result uh, 2013 master plan was put together um, there was a motion by Brian Flood and second, second by Howard Rosenbaum to adopt the resolution for the Route 17 Recreational Complex Steering Committee, and that is us. Um, our do, charge. Do your other members want to raise their hand, Carla? So that uh, we there's here. Ralph, Rick, Chris, you. Jess. Could you just Ann. give your name to um, Sharon? We'll start with Jessica.
So, um, our charge, our goal um, given by the selectmen was to educate, research grants, and look, in the, look into the financial effect of a park. Um, we as a committee have come before the selectmen over the past several months, and we have given updates on groups we have met with, events we have attended, people we have shared ideas with. We, as a committee, have provided lengthy and updated lists of potential grants to reduce the overall cost. We, as a committee, have met with multiple town departments to get an idea of the financial effects of the park. We, as a committee, have done our due diligence. So, on a personal note, and I'll keep it quick, my children have written letters as to why a park is important to them. And my boys are almost six and almost eight. Dear Board of Selectmen, I would like a park because I can ride a bike on the biking trail. I don't really have anywhere to go after school. Now I would have somewhere to go. The win in the winter, I would love to go ice skating and sledding in the, in the park. And that's from Caleb McKay. Thank you. He is, he will be eight. And, um, Dear Board of Selectmen, I hope it will happen for real life. I want a park because I can play, and I like parks. I want to go ice skating and play hockey. I want to play baseball. I want a place to ride my bike. I want to go where we can have a picnic and where we can walk. That's all I want to say. Thank you, Simon McKay. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so, um, I, as I said, we have done everything that the Board of Selectmen have asked of us. We have tried to provide as much information as we can. Um, so we just ask that you um, put the referendum um, on the ballot. I leave it now for Ralph. I also wanted to point out while Ralph is coming up to the podium, um, there were some written letters that I received to Aaron Gatto from Myrtle Road, um, Denise Schneider from, uh, let's see, Carousel Drive, Jen Olivia, and Jen doesn't identify her address, but I'm sure we can find that out. Um, I'm sorry? Thank you. Let me write that. Next is uh, Sarah Yeiser, 71 Stewart Hill, and uh, Kara Gleason, or Glezen, 951 Glastonbury Turnpike, and Christine Pereira, and Christine, I can find her address, and Lauren Christensen, 17 Wagon Wheel Lane, and Carrie King, and I'll need to find her address as well. But I will pass these to the selectmen so they can read these as well, um, and also will forward them as emails to you. So, Ralph. So what I was hoping would happen is that everyone would come and speak, and they would cover all the things that I wanted to speak about. So luckily, for the most part, that has been accomplished, which is good because they have indeed pointed out the critical things and the important things that we know would come from having the park. Um, we know that, <coughs> excuse me, we know that we're in a situation for, with Park and Rec is that we have major properties that are in our circuit of fields that are leased properties and we really need to get out of them um, for different reasons. I think one, someday we may be told to leave it and the other one, it just seems like it's a, you know, from Angersall, you know, we need to put money into it. It's not the time to do it because it's, it's, it's leased property. So we would like to get out of there so we don't have to deal with that. And then Tommaso, for baseball, it seems like it could be used for better purposes in an industrial area rather than used for baseball. 
and that would come with moving the new, to a new field in this property. Um, <coughs> you know, we're at a situation where they need work, and, and we're not looking to put money into leased properties, and that's what we really want to get out of there. Um, with regards to other things, you know, we've talked about, certainly people have talked about the splash pad, um, and that's, you know, that's really critical because we have a lot of people, and we've talked to a lot of people at Lee Town, and they're doing it every day now because it's summer, and they're going to, first day we're going to Colchester, and now they're going to Cromwell because now Cromwell has one of those. So they're certainly packing up, leaving, and probably getting their lunch somewhere else and not in Portland. So... You know, we know that that would offer. You know, we've certainly talked about pool. Pool would not be, uh, the, that location is not the best place for a pool, but at least would provide a water alternative for the time being that we can provide to our, to our users of our services. Um, <coughs> playgrounds, I know that, you know, people are gonna say, well, we have playgrounds in the, in the town. Why do we need more playgrounds? Well, all those playgrounds are tied to schools. So in the course of a day when school is in session, the parents that maybe stay home, they cannot bring their kids there because uh, the school's gonna have first use of those facilities. So, um, you know, it, and bringing them and bringing them where all of the games may be going on would also give an opportunity for parents to be able to take their kids who are, rather than st sitting there next to a field and trying to figure out how you're gonna keep a four or five year old occupied while their siblings are playing um, cer certainly provides an alternative. We, uh, <coughs> we also have the situation that we have a wonderful program that Sean runs with summer camp. And we've been able to merge all of the camps up to the high school facility. And it's been a great thing. But what we run into with the two things with the high school is that we're obviously at the mercy of if something's going on at the high school and we have to you know give up that space for whatever reason probably mainly if it was a maintenance type issue but other things can occur uh, so what we are proposing is to have a, a you know a barn that can allow us to move our, pro our programs to the park which would be good from the other standpoint is that now kids will be actually being able to experience the outdoors again, which you only can experience so much outdoors when you're up at the high school, mainly when they're on fields or in cafeterias. So they will actually be able to get outside and that would be great. And, um, <coughs> and certainly the last thing about with regards to fields is um, with the facility is that there, we, we would be adding additional walking trail, th three quarters of a mile walking trail, but Internally within that park, you could certainly extend that by doing loops around the various areas that will be in the park. You know, we, we talked about, there's a lot of walking that goes on. A lot of people walk up at uh, Bransfield Park, <coughs> excuse me, and we, we, we know that Bransfield Park is still in play where that could be disrupted by, at some point, not certainly now, but at some point with regards to soil removal. So that could take that out if we had that, that's potential. We know a lot of people walk on Main Street, and there's always discussions about the quality of the sidewalks on Main Street, and this would allow us to get out of that and not worry about that because we'd have a safe paved trails for people to go around and it would be accessible for uh, parents pushing strollers, little kids learning to ride, you know, learn to ride a bike or ride in their bikes, those would that provide that opportunity. Um, <coughs> we, we we certainly spent a whole lot of time talking about fields, and I know that's endlessly what we talk about and argue about, or how many kids play this, and should we really be opening and creating new fields? But, you know, from Sean and I, our standpoint is what, you know, and it's been mentioned by a lot of, of people today, and I'm very happy, is that it's really about building a facility that's for the community. We want to bring everyone together. That's what we're looking for. So we certainly want to address some of the issues we have with, uh, with fields, and our, what we're dealing with from a park and rec standpoint, but what we're looking for is really creating a community atmosphere. Um, and the last thing I just want to address from the standpoint of the discussion is about whether, you know, it's a want, you know, I, and I've been attending these meetings where we've talked, you know, I've been with Long Range Capital, so I'm aware of the things in town that we've talked about. 
and ad identifying the, the priorities of these items and talking about whether it's a wants and it's a needs. And, you know, I, and I know long range capital is probably going to come forward and they're going to say that the park is really a wants. But from my standpoint, you know, I, I'm now moving from the standpoint of my kids are in college and now I'm looking from the standpoint of what I've invested into my property and what that offers. And as I've said to a number of people, the value of the property of your house is only as good as someone actually wanting to buy that house. And we have a situation right now, and I know we are all very proud that our town is on the list of one of the best communities to retire to, and that's great. But ultimately, I think what you have a situation is you really have to be, it's, it's all about the circle of life, and we need to make sure that we have just as many young families in town as we do have people that are retiring and staying in the community. And we have to offer the services that they see in these other towns. It's getting more difficult. It's getting more difficult. And the towns around us are putting in facilities. Obviously, we talked about the splash pad. I know East Hampton is doing something with playgrounds. And we no longer have the brightest, shiniest, newest high school from the standpoint of renovations because now East Hampton has renovated. So they are jumping ahead on that. So if we are going to continue to be relevant to young families wanting to move in, we really need to address these things. So from a standpoint of financially and budget, maybe it would be considered what they think to be a wants, but I think it's really critical for us to continue to be relevant to the, to the families around town. We have to bring young families in. And certainly the discussion of millennials doing things like what Elmcrest, we need to get young people to stay in town because we're an aging community as our plan of conservation shows and that is not a good thing. So I know I'm one of those people but <laughs> but we need to be we need to have a you know we need people of all ages within our town. So anyway, I I pass the question to you and you certainly can ask me any questions otherwise. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Just a couple of things. Um, I, I think I think it's for me personally. I'm very excited about the idea of the park for many reasons, um, and I think I've heard just about all of them here today, in, with regards to the younger families saying they want a place to stay in town. Right? How many families go to a different water park to do things? Right? I get that, um, but it's also very encouraging to hear those who were a little bit older, maybe closer to Ralph's age. Um, that, <laughs> that um, whose kids are beyond that age that realize how important it is to have the younger families have something to do or to have their moms or dads that might be retired be able to do something. So I like that idea. And I think um, that's really good to see and good to hear because this has generated almost as much um, passion as the other issue in town. Um, so, my, so my thing is I think it's important. I think, and I don't want to speak for the board, but I think um, there is so many good reasons to have this park done, and I think getting it on the ballot and getting it on the on as something uh, in the fall um, is going to happen. That's my prediction. It's going to happen. But um, secondly, uh, I want to address what Rick had said as well, because there are obviously a lot of people here that are for the park, but there are people that are concerned about the cost, and I just want to address that because it's not just the park and quality of life that's important in town to me. Um, but it's also important to have good roads and other infrastructure as well. So I think that's an important piece of the puzzle to look at. I think we need to look at that as well um, and, and, and prioritize that. Um, but I think as a board, um, you know, we'll be looking at both of those seriously. Um, but the park, big fan, something I think that would bring a lot to the town and give people a reason to move in um, and stay in town, not travel someplace else. So uh, we could do a lot with that. Um, it's exciting. I also am very skewed, by the way, because I see so many of the young families in what I do. So I'm seeing parents constantly <coughs> talk about what they did someplace else, where they're going beside Portland. So, um, so I hear it a lot, and I'd love to have them say, "Gosh, I just finished a five-mile walk at the park," you know. So here in town. Okay. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? Fred? Yeah. You ready, Fred? Go ahead. Oh. Kathy? Go ahead. Um, yeah, nice to see everybody, a nice big turnout, and uh, I know that a lot of folks have worked very hard on the project. Um, I, I had a couple of things that um, I wanted to, to mention. Uh, 
well, the first one uh, goes along with what um, a prior uh, uh, testifier, I believe uh, Rick, uh, had made regarding the infrastructure. And, and while there are a lot of voices for the park, um, by nature there are very few voices for the infrastructure. We need it, the roads, we need the roads. Um, our water and sewer system is antiquated. Um, Lord knows when the next problem will, will occur. Um, our sidewalks are, uh, as some of you are well aware, are uh, in total disrepair in some places. Um, so the infrastructure needs a voice too. And uh, so I would be inclined to, um, if the project uh, moves forward, if the question uh, or a question similar to this were to move forward, I would like to see um, infrastructure included in it because I think that also is going to be essential to the town. Um, so that's, that's one thing. The second thing is regards the cost. I, I think it's, it's very important. There has been no uh, mention this evening of specific dollar figures. And I think when people go out to vote um, uh, on any issue, uh, they have to have some sense of what it's going to cost. So I think that should be part of our discussion, uh, the board's discussion in, in at some point in the near future so we can get that um, information out to the public. Um, whether it's per million dollars per, for bonding, what's it going to cost uh, the taxpayers, and um, what's the effect on, on, on the property tax. Uh, so those are just a couple of things that I, I would like to share with the group. And again, I, 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 th I know a lot of people work very hard on this and, and, and uh, have certainly done their due diligence. I agree. Um, you've come to the Board of Selectmen on several different occasions and uh, have provided uh, a lot of information. Uh, that's all I have. Yeah. I guess I'll say a few things also. Uh, I'd like to start by you know thanking everybody that got involved, and I've known know quite a few of you guys that have put your time into to get this as far as uh, getting it on the ballot. I think the the reality is I'd like to see it eventually get to the ballot, um, but we all have to also be fair and honest about uh, when we set up here as elected officials. If we know there are um, needs, um, and I think Ralph summed it up. This this might not be a want. This could be argued a need. Um, but the other needs obviously couldn't be ignored either and uh, so I would think everybody you know should at least stay involved in the process and we're gonna in the probably in the next meeting or two start to learn what the other needs are uh, and then it should in, you know shouldn't should be put to a, a vote I I think I might even have the most kids in the room I definitely have the most kids on this board but um, <laughs> so maybe I'm a little one-sided but the, rea the reality is I also have to take uh, my role up here very seriously if there are other needs that this town uh, needs uh, addressed soon we need to be talking about it also and it, that's not a get, doesn't mean it's against what the, the main the big picture here so as long as we can all work together and, and get there and get the right things on the ballot I think there's no issue and whenever you have the people's voices heard and voting on things I think it's wonderful so thank you I agree I think over the next six weeks we really have to work on this and get the information from Rick and the departments of what really is needed in the town. I definitely want to see this on the ballot, um, but we also have to gather together what else is needed, what that total cost will be, and how we're going to present that to the voters. We need to, to definitely get their input for this. And I um, appreciate all that everyone has done, and I think now it's up to us to come up with with this final number, what what we feel that the taxpayers will accept and how it will impact them. And then we'll be able to make a, a better decision. Right? I agree with that, what everyone has said here today, so I'm not going to reiterate that. I'll just say from a personal standpoint, I am in favor of the park. I'm in favor of this ballot on the public side. exciting to be sitting here this 
you can then see the turnout for people who feel so, so strongly about something for the town. Um, I, th I think it's great for all of us here to witness that. Um, I think it should move to ballot question. Um, <coughs> Susan, uh, uh, as far as point of information, when will we be getting the extra um, information, um, uh, long-term capital, and would we be looking at two questions? Would we, would we rolling into one question? Do you have any of those answers? Well, um, and the ultimate decision catches up to this board as to whether they want to put out one question or more than one question. So that is our decision. In terms of the information that Rick and our town engineer are preparing for us, I'm hoping that we will have information for August 3. Rick, are you still in the room? No. No, I, I'm asking when you August, and, August, and August, first of September. the end, end of August. The end of August, first of September. So there's okay. a tremendous amount of work that, that has to be done. Okay. Next Long week. Range Capital is supposed to give me something next week, Good. I'm okay. hoping, Thank you. Um, which Thank I you. will share immediately with everyone. But they're, they're hoping that they'll have something at the end of this month. Um, so um, th there are needs, obviously, in the town. Every town, every city has needs. Um, and this particular project is something that I've been working on um, along with a few other people in the room. I think um, Kathy in particular and, and even before her, people that, believe it or not, they're not with us on earth anymore, unfortunately. Um, there were many people <coughs> involved with this um, and um, went to the ballot to uh, purchase what's known as the Goodrich property. And the purpose is um, and was at the time for recreational expansion in the town. So the four bearers uh, um, of this board recognized the need for the town. Um, and we have waited for over 10 years now for the purchase. And we finished the, the cost associated with, with that purchase. We paid for it over 10 years. Um, it's a beautiful piece of land. It does need uh, quite a bit of work in order to bring it um, to the plan that we have in front of us. The steep grant that we received uh, was a generous contribution by the state of Connecticut uh, that we utilized, and the Weston and Sampson uh, Engineering Group came up with a really a very well thought through plan for this park. Um, so what we had told the committee that worked on the development of the plan was that we would put it on the presidential ballot. And I am committed to doing that. I will be voting to put it on the ballot. I think it's an important question for our community and our town. Um, we will also be reviewing other infrastructure needs um, as we need to do all the time. Um, but this is a project that I've been working on for a long time and I'm looking forward to having the question in front of the voters uh, because it is something that the voters are entitled to vote on. It's a major question, um, and I look forward to seeing how people vote on it. The fashion of it, whether it's going to be one question or two questions, is something that this board will continue to work on. We also are um, in the process of collecting uh, what's called financial advisor. And the financial advisor, once selected, uh, they're due, all the proposals are due by Tuesday. Um, they would assist us in looking at our current debt service, how that will run out and when that peaks, ends, um, and um, we will continue to monitor that. So there's a lot of, of information that we'll be sharing over the next several weeks, as you pointed out, Kathy, uh, but I think it is an important question that people deserve to be able to vote on. And by charter, it is a referendum question because it borrows money. It's not a question that could be, so one speaker thought that it could be determined by this board. This board establishes the question, but because it exceeds uh, the, the number that's in the charter for borrowing, it has to go to the voters for a referendum. Can't go to a town meeting, it has to go to a referendum. Kathy? Um, the decision for one question or two, was that September 8th? We, yes, we have to have our work as a board of selectmen we have to have the, quest, the final question or questions to the town clerk's office by September 8th. If my math is correct, I think that's 60 days before the November 8th election, uh, the presidential ballot, and then he has a certain amount of time to get it to the Secretary of State, and then they have to issue the ballots. 
you know, the absentee ballots, the ballots for um, people overseas have to be received within a certain amount of time. So <clears throat> there's a strict deadline for that. I want to accomplish the question far before September 8. Um, and we have been talking about this for quite a while. Will we have each and every um, final number from the other infrastructure? Well, um, that's ongoing. I mean, I can tell you every day I'm told, oh, we need to do this and we need to address this. Um, this is a project that has, I believe, been well vetted in terms of its plan. It's a shovel-ready project. Um, and you, the taxpayers, have invested in this already. Um, so if that's an important um, point to be made, that you bought this property, you paid for this property, and through your state tax dollars, you paid, along with other members of Connecticut, you paid for the plans to go forward. So in terms of the question, it remains with you, and I'm committed to putting it on the ballot. Any other questions? So you're not going to see the final question tonight, as I mentioned earlier, because I can't do that. Um, but I think it, it deserves uh, people's. Any other comments, Mike? Just, yeah, just two quick comments. Um, I've seen the committee that's been working hard to get everything together on this Ralph and, and the rest of the team. Um, they've done such a good job getting it organized. What's happened is a lot of other parts of Todd have gone, have gone wow, they're way ahead. We want to be in on that. And in a way, initially, I thought this was going to complicate the whole process. I'm just kind of thinking out loud right now with you. But um, I think it actually is going to make it a better situation because we have, it gives us a chance to look at the infrastructure. And I think if we can prioritize the things that we need, the park to me is a must. That, that's not a want. That's a, that's a need to me. Um, so I, I would vote for that. Um, but I think there might be other ones in there as well. And I think as a town, I think more people in town that aren't here now are more likely to say yes to a park and other things that are needed, uh, maybe some other high priority things. Um, so I would be in favor of putting it together and something. But my thinking would be what would be the what would be the total number that we want to borrow and what would be the burden on our taxpayers and what would be you know the cost per and, and, and go from that side. So I think separating it out to me would I think not do as much justice to each one. No on this, yes on this. I think combining it together to me would make more sense. But I, that's just my Yeah, point. I will tell you since since you bring that up that um, the finance office told me that if the number the total amount of borrowing in a given calendar year is under $10 million, that that number doesn't carry with it as many expenses and fees as a number over $10 million. So just to keep that in mind, and it's, it's a cumulative. So if there's other borrowing that might have occurred in that time, that you would need to have that as part of that $10 million. So that's just one piece of information that the financial advisor would continue to help us with. making a, a, a <laughs> statement about what the number is going to be, just that that is um, one, of the, uh, one of the areas that we look at. It appears to be consensus on putting the question in some format on the ballot. Is that apparent? I see heads bobbing. And, and I'm, I'm leaning towards one question, just that I think the reality is if there's a whole lot of, uh, in some people's minds, uh, wants and needs, the reality is it, it, you might vote for a park and not all the stuff we need. So if we're doing something, I think uh, I would probably recommend we keep it as one question. We figure out, like Mike said, sort through what we're, is presented to us and figure out what yeah. needs to be done in that time frame and then we move forward. I and the, and the other thing I think, Ben, that's important to point out, um, <coughs> because I was here, Kathy and I were here when we were putting the uh, bonds out for the schools. Because you have authorization for a certain number, the bonds aren't issued immediately. So while the impact may be given in terms of, of the total impact, typically uh, bonds are sold as needed um, and as projects um, proceed. So you know, th there's a lot more to this than just the number. Um, and that's why we go to financial advisors and uh, bond council attorneys that I'll tell you, you pay uh, a fair amount of money per hour for, uh, but they do a good job because it's critical for towns to do this right. 
Um, and the last time we went out for a bond was 2004, um, which was 2004-05, um, which was for the, uh, the high school project. Okay, so we agree there is consensus, so the minutes yeah. will reflect. Yes. There's consensus for this question to be on, on the ballot. One other, Fred? Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. But well, one other, I just like to join join with the advocates for one question. I too would like to see this one question. Everything is one question. Yeah, three of us so far. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's not part of the consensus tonight. Um, but, um, um, okay. Are you on the committee, Riz? No. Are we going to let Riz speak? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, here's, here's my question. If there's a watershed number of 10 million, for example, and the park says we need X, and the <coughs> infrastructure requires Y, and they come up to 11, is there a way of breaking it back out to what they could do in year one versus year I think there probably is because, Riz, um, when we issued the bonds for the schools, they were issued in two separate years. That's why I'm saying um, it's in the calendar year. So we issued bonds of under $10 million in year one, and then in year two it was under $10 million. So to your point, the, the ballot question could be higher than that number, that 10 number, that $10 million number, but the issuance would have to be... Um, if it's over that amount, and I don't know what it would be, it's, we're just talking right now, but that's an important point that I want the selectmen to contemplate as we talk about this. We're not the only town doing this. If you, I'm sure all of you read the papers and read the information. Um, it's very important to uh, keep your infrastructure up and make sure that you uh, are running a good time. So I think it's laudable that all of you care to be here tonight. Um, also that our Long Range Capital Planning Commission is looking at this as our town staff, um, as well as all the staff. So you all deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Did any of the committee members, Carla, want to speak anymore? Richard? I just want to say thank you. Okay. Rich Basso, um, lifelong resident, 345 Gospel Lane, also on the committee. We've done a lot of hard work. And um, unfortunately, I wish I could have done more, but I have my own issues at home with an elderly father, and uh, it's hard for me. Anyway. Um, being a, a next door neighbor to this piece of property, I think, to me, uh, would increase property values. Um, not just to me, but to everyone around Portland. Um, and I look around and I see other towns of what they have and what they don't have. And uh, I just think this would be a home run for Portland. And I would encourage everyone to tell your neighbor, tell your friends, come out and support this project. Now I know that, believe me, we do have some crumbling sidewalks and of course we need to in include the uh, upgrade of our water and sewer and whatever that cost, I would hope that this board wouldn't piecemeal any one project. So if the park in its an entirety uh, cost X, well, we're going to hold off and only do A, B, and C and not quite get to X. I don't want to see that. I, I, I don't think the board wants to see that. So I would hope that whatever it takes, you vote in, in for this entire project, along with other projects that have to be addressed. And again, perhaps one question, and just put it on the ballot and give it to the voters. And I, I'm, 
I'm in full support again of this project. Thank you. for you on that? No. Um, but we would have to go um, through the process of getting um, uh, vetted by the financial houses as far as our bond rating and either have it affirmed or improved, whatever would be their call. And then you would um, determine the procedure of which projects go first and how that gets done. And then your financial advisor assists you in terms of how those bonds get issued and sold. Um, and then we go out to market and they tell us what, what the interest rates would be. And then whether you're paying interest in the beginning or you're paying principal, it probably all sounds familiar to a lot of you that do this um, for a living. But I can't tell you immediately what that schedule would be. That's just sort of a framework as to how it would occur. Uh, everything doesn't get done immediately, as we know. Um, as I mentioned, the land was purchased over 10 years ago. Here we are today, um, getting getting hopefully to the next step. So we would move it as uh, quickly as we can, just as we will should the should infrastructure projects also be um, listed. But they all have to be coordinated because we have you know, the reality of seasons and the reality of the ability to get certain things done in a timely fashion. So I didn't really answer your question. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Then we're ready to go on to the next item on the agenda, correct? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Do we need a brief recess? Are you all staying till 11 o'clock tonight? Yes. Okay, we'll keep moving, but you can feel free to. It's a special meeting agenda, but are we allowed without rearranging the agenda? Can we pick another quick one, like firework display update? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, we got a lot ahead of you. After one of your last meetings regarding uh, uh, complete streets and main street painting and whatever, Susan directed me to get pricing for. Um, Flashers at um, three locations, uh, Gildersleeve School on Main Street, Brownstone Intermediate School, and the Valley View School. So I met with um, our traffic signal vendor, and uh, I have a price quote uh, for four, four solar-powered programmable flashing lights on Main Street and, and one relocation of a flashing light on uh, High Street would be $25,000. Um, and the maintenance fee on those would be approximately $900 a year. Uh, that does not include uh, line, that may or may not include other line, if you wanted to put stuff on the road, paint slow school zones, whatever, uh, that probably would be additional. But you're in the range of about $25,000 for, uh, for those flashers. 
And did you want to comment briefly on the actually the the painting on the road? No, not really. I, I it's kind of um, um, I could do the painting the painting on the road. Uh, I can do when I do my uh, typical road line striping, which is usually about in September after we let our chip seal roads kind of cure. Um, I'm guesstimating that's not a lot. That's in a couple couple thousand dollar range. By the time we get the police, we got you know we'd have to have a policeman there and whatever. So that's a couple thousand. So I think you know if you if you uh, assume that your flashers, if you wanted flashers and or line painting, would be in the range of twenty five thousand dollars. I can, and that assumes. Uh, and I've been in discussions with uh, DOT with regarding will they accept the pro. And these these flashers would be uh, uh, again solar powered. They would be. S they're limited probably to a couple hours in the morning when the kids are being brought to school and a couple hours in the afternoon when the kids are being taken home, which when typically would need them. If you wanted to have flashers on longer than that, you're into a hard wire flasher because the solar panels wouldn't do it. Now you're into more cost, capital cost and maintenance and electricity. So a uh, fair amount of money. Any questions for Rick so far? Thank you. We'll move on to the presentation from the Complete Streets Group. And Kathy Heron, did you want to start for us, please? Chairman. Good evening. I'm Kathy Heron, resident of Portland, chair of the Complete Streets Group in Portland. As I did at the June 8th uh, BOS meeting, I'd like to first refer to the vision statement in the 2016-2026 POCD recently adopted by the BOS. It states, quote, design improvement of both state and town roads will make them safer and more accessible for motorists, pedestrians, including those with mobility challenges, cyclists, and transit users. Improvements will promote the economy and have a positive impact on the health and well-being of individuals, unquote. As many of you know, the Portland Complete Streets Group began about two years ago as an extension of the Airline Trail Committee. And in fall of 2014, we became a Citizens Action Group. One of our goals for the past year has to be, been to write a Complete Streets Policy for our town. A Complete Streets Policy for a community can help direct planners, public works, engineers to routinely design as well as maintain roadways and sidewalks that enable safe access for everyone, regardless of their age, ability, uh, or mode of transportation. This means that every transportation project will make the street network better and safer for drivers, transit users, pedestrians, and cyclists, making our town a better place to live. Having a policy is also very important for funding opportunities at the federal, state, and local level. Our group has been gathering information for a policy for the past one to two years, including gathering data from resident surveys and holding two public meetings. Earlier this year, you, the BOS, approved a contract to hire a consultant to assist the town in writing a complete streets policy. And CSG, along with Deanna Rhodes, the former town planner, have been working with the consultant, uh, Brian Kent, of Kent and Frost, and writing a policy. So at this point, I'd like to recognize our other members of CSG that are here tonight, John Hall, Dave Berthume, Bob Perrin, and Chantal Foster, as well as uh, the two members that are not here tonight, Alice Shoemaker and Steve Kruisberg, and I thank them for their efforts. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Brian Kent, and he will tell you more about the policy. Thank you. So I'm projecting okay. Yep. Uh, we're we're going to move to the audience. Yep.
So we're going to we're going to talk about the uh, general concept of complete streets at first, and then I'm going to get into the conditions of Portland uh, and where and why complete streets uh, uh, have a role to play. And then we're going to talk about the uh, some of the specifics of the policy and the way that policies <laughs> are put together. Portland is not the first town to uh, consider a complete streets policy. There have been hundreds of these policies written. Uh, the pace of policy adoption is accelerating dramatically in this country and in this state. So um, my firm has put together a variety of, of policy and project related complete streets projects. We wrote a master plan policy for uh, Middletown and we've done uh, other kinds of projects in other communities. I'm going to see if this remote will work from this distance. If not, Bob, I'll need your help. All right. So first of all, let's answer this question, what are complete streets? Uh, uh, Kathy referred to it in her remarks. But in a nutshell, this, these are uh, uh, transformations in most cases of streets uh, from being just for automobiles to streets that are for everyone, no matter who they are or how they travel. And that's a, that's a very general uh, uh, statement, but to get to be a little more specific, let's talk about the typical elements of complete streets. They include, of course, the roadway, which is the, um, the existing element in every case, but also sidewalks, bicycle facilities, which include uh, bike lanes, signed routes, places to park your bike, like bike racks. They also include trails that add connectivity to a community, and uh, Portland is very fortunate to be on the uh, receiving western end of the airline trail as it, as it moves uh, from uh, East Hampton. And that's an important piece of the, uh, of, the, of the recipe here in Portland for connecting uh, places where people live to places they want to go, like the schools and the library and, and the, the, the shopping district. It also includes crosswalks because uh, in almost every case when you, when you walk through a community you need to cross a road and it's very important that we look at crosswalks and safe crosswalks and of course we were just talking about that a few minutes ago. Paved shoulders can be uh, uh, part of the complete street network because they give bicyclists uh, and drivers, in many cases, a safe uh, place to, to, uh, to move. The curb cuts refers to those, the, the, the ramps that allow uh, people with disabilities to safely you know, leave the sidewalk and, and cross the street. Transit connections, of course, where, uh, where you can catch, catch the bus. And even street trees are elements of complete streets because they, they humanize the roadway and they actually uh, uh, tend to slow drivers down in many cases when streets are lined with trees. We refer to that as visual friction. To answer this question, why do this? The most important reason to do this, to, to look at your streets in a different light, is because of safety. The, the issue of safety trumps all else. And the vulnerability of people who are walking and biking on our roadways is clearly documented. The greatest share, the greatest proportion of, of injuries occur in those groups. There may be more accidents in total uh, between automobiles and other automobiles and other uh, sorts of things, but the people who are walking and the people who are biking take the brunt of it uh, proportionally. They are the most vulnerable users of our streets. And because so many streets are just unsafe, because there's nowhere, nowhere to walk, there's no sidewalk, there's no place for a bicycle to be out of the, the roadway, people don't walk or bicycle or get the physical activity in their communities that they need. And so by making the roadway safer, uh, more people can uh, uh, live a healthier lifestyle. And that lifestyle, when it includes routine walking and using uh, bicycles for transportation, 
really makes a huge difference in, in, in people's health. And it uh, has environmental benefits as well. It uh, uh, helps overall to reduce automobile emissions. And when more people walk, they spend their money more locally. If you can comfortably walk into uh, downtown Portland from your neighborhood or ride a bicycle, you're more likely to spend money that way. If you're not spending money on your, on your car, most of the money you spend on cars goes out of your town. Think about the cost of the car and the insurance and the fuel. That's money going out of the town. If you're not driving as much, you have more money to spend in your town. And when you implement complete streets improvements over time, your community begins to reflect a quality of life uh, factor that is documented highly valuable, and that's referred to as livability. The, to become a bike walk friendly community means a lot, and it has a lot of value.